Hey guys, welcome back again to your Run Academy in English channel. I hope all of you are doing great, having a good time. So my dear students, this particular session is all about chemistry. How you can score really well when it comes to your NEET 2025 chemistry, even if you are starting from now. That's the reason why I have kept the title as 0 to 170 plus when it comes to the NEET 2025 chemistry. So this particular session is going to be very short and precise wherein I'm going to let you know each and everything which you need to do in order to score really high uh, in the subject chemistry when it comes to either NEET 2025 or even NEET 2026, right? So my dear students, the first and the most important thing, what is that? When you start preparing for chemistry, knowing that chemistry is your second most scoring subject after your biology, right? So if you are scoring like 340, 350 in your biology, and scoring less than 100 in your chemistry, then the selection in the NEET is impossible, I must say, right? So you need to score 160 plus in your chemistry, then only you can secure your seat in the government medical college. And what all things you need to do for that, let's get to know one by one. So first of all, my dear students, majority of the students, way which the type of the mistake which they commit while preparing for chemistry, what is that? That is related to the sequence. They keep on jumping basically. They do not follow the proper sequence in your physical, organic and inorganic chemistry. So first of all, I have kept a proper sequence of physical, inorganic and organic chemistry over here. And if you are preparing right now for your NEED 2025 or even 2026, then this has to be the sequence which is to be followed in your physical chemistry. This is the sequence of the chapters which is to be followed when it comes to your inorganic. And this is going to be the sequence of the chapters which is to be followed when it comes to your organic chemistry. And my dear students, do remember the most important thing. What is that? Your mole concept, your periodic classification, and your GOC. These are the three fundamental chapters which can make each part of the chemistry very, very, very strong. Remember, if your mole concept is strong, your physical chemistry automatically is going to be stronger. If your periodic classification, even bonding is strong, then automatically your inorganic chemistry will build in an effective way. And in the similar way, if your GOC, general organic chemistry is stronger, that means automatically you'll get the interest in organic chemistry and eventually your entire organic chemistry is going to become stronger. So these are the three fundamental chapters on which you have to focus more upon. Number one. So this is the sequence of the chapters which I would want you guys to follow if you are preparing for the NEET 2025 or even NEET 2026, right? For the, uh, for the examination, I mean. Going ahead. Now, how do we exactly approach? How do we exactly approach physical, organic, and inorganic? My dear students, few things which you need to remember. What are those things? When it comes to your physical chemistry, when it comes to your physical chemistry, you will be starting with the lectures. You'll be starting with the lectures. Whosoever teacher you're following in chemistry, right? Watch his or her lectures properly in an effective way. After that, follow your DPPs. And once you are done your DPPs, just solve the NEAT and G means PYQs. That is, you can call it, that is super sufficient when it comes to your physical chemistry. But when it comes to organic and inorganic, you have to add certain things. What are those things exactly? You have to add NCRT reading, okay, in both your inorganic and organic chemistry. Apart from this, Every single thing is same. Well, you can skip NCRT reading in your physical. You can just follow the notes of your teacher. You can just follow the lectures followed by DPPs and PYQs in the physical. But in inorganic and organic, NCRT reading is must, my dear student. It is must, right? Now, how do we exactly complete a chapter? How do we exactly complete a chapter in chemistry? See, I've seen a lot of students completing a chapter. Still after completing the chapter, they are unable to solve the questions. They are not getting that confidence in them that yes, if a question is coming from this particular chapter, which they have done, they, uh, I mean, they won't be able to solve those questions. They won't be able to solve 100% of the questions of that particular chapter, which they have already covered. Why is that? That is due to the lack of confidence. Now, how this confidence is built when it comes to the subject chemistry? My dear students, you have to complete a chapter following a proper sequence basically. And what is that sequence? First of all, this is something which I keep on telling you in all my sessions. Watch the lectures first. Once you are done with the lectures, right? Do the note making on your own. Do not rely on the session PDFs. Once you are done with the note making, whatever question your teacher has solved in the lecture, 
solve the same questions again without seeing the solution, right? Right after that, you can go for the DPPs. Once you are done for the DPPs, you can solve more questions with the help of NCRT in text and exercise questions, right? And then you will go into your PYQs of your NEET and JE mains, which will exactly give you an insight of what are the important, important topics from a particular chapter. What are the topics from which majority of the times questions have been asked in a chapter? That's something which you'll get to know by solving more and more PYQs. And after that, a chapter-wise mock test is required. This is the sequence of the things which you need to follow. And if you are following this particular sequence, my dear students, I would say 99% probability is you will solve the question correctly from a particular chapter, which you have covered by following this particular sequence, right? One more thing. My dear students, in your physical chemistry and your, in your organic chemistry, you are supposed to do two things. What is that? Formula sheets are super important when it comes to your physical chemistry, right? And similarly, organic reaction sheets again are super important when it comes to your organic chemistry. Because uh, in your physical chemistry, I would say three to four questions directly would be formula based, right? In your organic chemistry, I would say four to five questions will be directly coming from the organic reaction sheets. So in total, I would say eight to 12 questions you can expect just from these two things. So do not avoid these two things. If you have not made the formula sheets till now, if you have not made the organic reaction sheets till now, try to make them on priority because you have got ample amount of time left to write the neat examination. Do not avoid these two things at all. So eight to 12 questions is not a joke just from the two things. Because in your physical, right, you get questions directly formula based, right? There will be few questions. And similarly, from your organic part, you'll be getting a lot of questions from the organic reaction sheets. What, I mean, what, is, what is the meaning of the organic reaction sheets exactly? But your students, you know, there are a lot of reactions basically in your organic chemistry. You have to make certain sheets wherein you just have to write the reactions. Name of the reaction, reactant, reagent, product. Reactant, reagent, product. Reactant, reagent, product. And every day for like 15 to 20 minutes, you have to revise these two things. Every day for like 15 to 20 minutes. And if you do that, you are not going to do these 8 to 12 questions incorrectly, right? You will be doing these questions correctly in your examination hall and that too in a span of less than 10 seconds. Trust me on that. That's something which happens. Moving ahead. Organic chemistry, <coughs> you know, it is the biggest headache for the students, right? Organic chemistry. My dear students, when it comes to your organic chemistry, if you really want to make your organic chemistry very, very, very strong, then there are some prerequisites which are to be done first. There are certain topics which you have to cover first, which you have to make strong first, then only you can efficiently cover your organic chemistry. Now, what are those topics exactly? Have a look. First one is your hybridization, your acid-base theory, electronegativity, bond polarity, chemical bonding principles, and molecular structures. These are some of the topics which you should cover on priority. If you want to get a proper command on organic chemistry, then these are the prerequisites which are to be covered first. And these are the prerequisites basically from the chapter chemical bonding, right? Okay, most of them are from the chapter chemical bonding. Perfect. So what I want to say is, if you want to make your organic chemistry stronger, then your chemical bonding chapter must be very, very, very strong. Okay, moving ahead, guys. First of all, have a look at the weightage. Have a look at the, your organic chemistry weightage. Well, first of all, your GOC consists of maximum weightage, right? Followed by your hydrocarbons, followed, followed by your aldehydes, ketones, and carboxylic acids. And then it comes to your, uh, your alcohols, phenols, ethers, and at the end, it's your amines. This is, I would say, uh, the highest weightage chapter I have mentioned at the top. And the lowest weighted chapter I have mentioned at the bottom when it comes to your organic chemistry. Perfect. So prioritize these chapters the most which are the high weighted chapters. And my dear students, from these particular topics, I mean from these particular chapters, I mean you can expect some 14 to 17 questions in your NEET 2020. I mean in your NEET 25 examination. Perfect. Even in the 26 examination. Now, if we go deeper into the organic chemistry part, in the organic chemistry part, we have got three things. We have got three things. We bifurcate organic chemistry into three things. One is your basics. One is your reactions. Another part is the application part, right? Your basics, it consists of your nomenclature, GOC, and isomerism. 
perfect this is this is what you call as the basics of organic chemistry goc nomenclature and isomerism perfect they form the foundation of your organic chemistry guys remember if these are the if these chapters are strong your organic chemistry is going to be like i mean it's going to be the most scoring part of your chemistry if your these three chapters are like super prepared now up to that when it comes to your reactions reactions are from the chapter hydrocarbon allo compounds alcohols phenols ethers amines aldehydes ketones carboxylic acids and your application part involves your biomolecules and your uh, poc right your poc now if i talk a bit more in detail my dear students in your basics part i have mentioned three chapters one is your nomenclature one is your goc one is your isomerism what exactly you need to do in order to cover nomenclature my dear students well this particular nomenclature you are not going to go deep into this particular subject nomenclature just have a look on that particular part of nomenclature which can be asked do not go deeper into this particular part right you just need to stick to the basics and in order to be the master of the nomenclature part try to solve more and more pyqs of your neat and j mains when it comes to the part nomenclature right because from the nomenclature the questions are i would say most of the times questions are directly copied and pasted from your j mains pyq so i would suggest you guys in the nomenclature part to do the j mains pyqs of last 5 to 7 years at least right now when it comes to your goc goc is very important but at the same time it is confusing when for the students right okay what are the key concepts which you are going to highlight what are the key concepts which you are going to focus more on when it comes to your goc it is inductive effect mesomeric effect hyperconjugation their applications which involves your acidic basic strengths and aromaticity right these are the super important topics of your goc which you have to focus more upon when it comes to your isomerism you have got structural and stereoisomerism well i would suggest your structural isomerism basics is enough for it do not go deeper into it but when it comes to your stereoisomerism you are supposed to go deeper because this stereoisomerism is needed in the other chapters of your organic chemistry as well particularly i would suggest you to go deeper into the optical isomerism which is one of the key topics used in the other chapters of your organic chemistry as well so in your organic structural isomerism just basics is enough but in your stereo part you need to go deeper especially when it comes to your optical isomerism now this was the basics now when it comes to the reaction part my dear students there are a lot of lot of lot of reactions given in your organic chemistry uh, ncrt does that mean you have to remember the mechanism of each and every reaction no there are some 25 reactions whose mechanism you have to remember and at the same time you have to remember the mechanism of the naming reactions as well and what are those reactions what are those 25 reactions for which you have to remember the mechanism i have mentioned uh, chapter wise chapter wise topics chapter wise reactions i've mentioned over here their mechanisms are to be studied in detail because from the mechanism part questions can be asked like these are the reactions when it comes to hydrocarbon these are the reactions which uh, comes under your haloalkanes arenes these are the reactions which comes under your alcohols phenols and ethers for which you have to understand and remember the mechanism similarly these are the other chapters which include your aldehydes and ketones right nucleophilic addition halo form aldol condensation etc etc carboxylic acids hydrolysis of ester acyl chlorides and hydrides etc similarly in case of amides these are basically the reactions for which you have to understand and remember the mechanisms as well perfect so my dear students if you just keep these things into your mind if you just keep whatever i have told you in this particular session if you just keep these things into your mind it is going to make your organic chemistry very 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 strong why am i am i talking more about organic chemistry because a lot of students keep on asking me the doubts related to organic chemistry they find organic chemistry very 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 tough 